MLflow is a product of Databricks, and it can be used in their notebook environment to build models and track experiments. In this lab, we'll demonstrate how to get started with a Databricks Community Edition account to build models and track experiments using MLflow. Databricks is a cloud-based platform for data engineering and machine learning. It is available on major cloud platforms such as AWS GCP and Microsoft Azure. Databricks was founded by the creators of Apache Spark, a widely used big data technology. The organization has also contributed to open source projects like MLflow and Delta Lake. The best way to get started with Databricks is through the Community Edition, which is free for lifetime use. We'll walk you through the account creation process, demonstrate how to create a cluster, and show how to set up notebooks in this lab. Search for Databricks Community Edition, then click on the Databricks Community Edition login and sign up link. Enter the required details to complete the sign up process. Click Get Started without selecting any cloud provider. The best way to get started with Databricks is through the Community Edition, which is free for lifetime use. While you can create accounts on AWS, Azure, or GCP, there are limitations on what you can do with free tier accounts. To avoid charges and start learning Databricks, the Community Edition is the best option. Let's proceed with the setup. Complete the required verifications. Check your email and click the verification link provided. Set up a password to secure your account. Your Databricks Community Edition account has been successfully created. The first step is to set up a Spark cluster with a machine learning runtime to execute machine learning code. Click on Compute and then select Create Compute to create a cluster. Name the cluster FXML cluster. Databricks can be used for data engineering tasks, like building pipelines with Apache Spark. However, in this lab, we'll focus on creating ML models and tracking experiments using Databricks. Under the Runtime options, select ML and choose one of the ML runtimes available. We can pick the latest runtime version, which at the time of this recording is 2.12 and 3.3.1. This will be an Apache Spark cluster configured with the necessary libraries for running machine learning workloads. Click Create Cluster to proceed. It will take a couple of minutes for the cluster to be created. We'll fast forward here. And now the cluster is ready. Since this is a Community Edition account, note that your cluster will terminate after two hours of inactivity. Next, we'll select Machine Learning and pin it as our default selection for easier access in the future. When we select machine learning, we see an experiment tab integrated with the Databricks environment. This allows all experiments created using notebooks to appear under this interface. To build models, all we need is a notebook. Let's create a notebook Name it MLflow Demo 
select Python as the language and click Create. While creating the notebook, we'll select the FXML cluster. Let's repeat this process to create another notebook named MLflow Demo 2, selecting the same FXML cluster. This cluster provides the required runtime for our machine learning libraries. Now, we'll copy the code we wrote earlier to track experiments using MLflow for a scikit-learn model. First, we'll import the necessary libraries. Next, we'll paste the code to build a scikit-learn model and track experiments with MLflow. To proceed, we need access to data. There are several ways to access data in the Databricks environment. Databricks provides a feature called DBFS, or Databricks File System. DBFS is a distributed storage system running on the Spark cluster. We'll upload a sample file to the DBFS and access it from there. Click on the Data tab to start. By default, the DBFS tab isn't visible. To enable it, go to Settings at the bottom of the page. Click on Admin Console and navigate to Workspace Settings. Enable the DBFS File Browser option. Refresh the page and click on the Data tab again. Now the DBFS tab appears, showing default directories like File Store. Upload a file to this directory to access it from your notebook. We have already uploaded a file, but to upload it again, simply click on Upload and select a file. This is the same store purchase data that we worked on earlier. So this is the other file, and both files contain the same content. Now let's see how we can access it. Go back to the notebook by clicking on the Recent tab and select MLflow Demo 2. As per the documentation, we should be able to read the file from DBFS and load it directly into a pandas data frame. However, in the Community Edition, this does not work as expected. Instead, we'll read it as a Spark data frame and then convert it to a pandas data frame. Using the default Spark session available in a Databricks notebook, we can read a CSV file and create a Spark data frame. We're not delving into Spark in this course, but it's important to learn the syntax to create a Spark data frame and convert it to a pandas data frame. Specify the correct path. We uploaded the store purchase file to the file store directory. Let's capture the Spark data frame in the variable df. By invoking two pandas, we can convert df to a pandas data frame and store it in the training data variable. Fix any typos in the code and execute the cell. Once completed, you can see the log. Databricks notebooks function similarly to Jupyter or Colab notebooks. Now, navigate to the Experiments tab. You can see the new experiment here, along with the latest run named Neuron 1.5. All the parameters and metrics are tracked here. Let's change the run name and rerun the cell. This will create a new run under the same experiment. This demonstrates how you can use the Databricks environment to build models and track experiments using MLflow. Databricks is a cloud-native environment, so you don't need to worry about installing MLflow separately 
or running the UI for experiments. It provides a unified interface to build models and track experiments without dealing with underlying infrastructure complexities. Additionally, the Databricks Community Edition is free for lifetime use. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. Check out our top rated Udemy course on machine learning, deep learning, and model deployment, linked in the description.